In this video, we're going to a walk, do a walkthrough through some source code of a RESTful web service implementation that we've built using the RESTlet framework. To keep things simple, we're going to run our implementation as a standalone Java program, um, which means that we're going to be using an HTTP server component that is included in the RESTlet framework instead of packaging the code as a uh, web archive and running it within the context of a third-party servlet container. So let's start with some preliminaries. We're going to assume, first of all, that you're already comfortable doing Java development in the Eclipse IDE. We're going to also assume that you have some uh, familiarity with the basic concepts of RESTful web services. And we're going to assume you've um, downloaded a recent version of the RESTlet framework from RESTlet.org. And in this screencast, we're using version 1.1.6. And then finally, you might want to grab a copy of the source code that we're going over in this screencast at the link on the bottom of the screen. The RESTlet framework and the third-party components that ship with it provide a tremendous amount of functionality for both the client side and the server. However, here we're going to concentrate on some very basic functionality. Um, we're going to see how the RESTlet framework routes incoming HTTP requests to a set of classes that we've extended from the resource class defined by the RESTlet framework. And that routing is based on the actual URL that's coming in on the HTTP request, as well, of course, as the method that is associated with that incoming HTTP request. So here is how our application is organized. Our web server is going to produce both HTML representations that will be consumed by just um, your typical web browser, and we also generate JSON representations um, that will be consumed by client applications. And these could very well be headless applications that aren't actually um, that a user is not necessarily interacting with, so they're just processes running on our machine that are going to be accessing these web services. And then this uh, box over here on the right shows the actual um, example application server that we're building with the RESTlet framework. And all of the functionality that we have in this example is going to be implemented in the four classes that you see here. The web services application class, the widgets resource class, the widget resource class, and then a widget class itself, which is um, just our plain old Java object that we're using to store the data. So our example application um, is going to serve up a single resource type, and these resources are widgets. And our actual widget data is going to be represented with instances of the widget class. And these are just plain old Java objects, POJOs, that re represent the actual resource data um, that the web server is managing for us. So the, red, the web service application class here is going to utilize um, an HTTP server component that um, is included with a RESTlet framework to handle all the incoming HTTP requests. And in addition, it's going to act as our container um, uh, of our in-memory uh, repository of widget resource instances. Um, this class, the web service application class, extends the application class that is defined by the framework. Now in a real web service implementation, the resource data of course would be stored in, in, in a real database, um, but in this simplified uh, example application, we're just going to store the data in memory to keep things simple. And since our web service application is a singleton, um, and that means there's only going to be a single instance of it, we're going to let it also serve as our container of widget resource um, instances. Next, we have two classes that extend the resource class defined by the framework. The widgets plural resource class up here on the, the green box on the top um, is going to handle all of the HTTP requests that come in that have an URL pattern um, which is like this this one shown in the top blue box. So anything coming in on slash widgets 
is going to get routed to this particular class. The second green box represents the widget resource class and this particular class is going to process all the HTTP requests that are coming in um, with URI, URL patterns matching um, what is shown here in the second blue box. So slash widget slash and then um, some ID being specified with it. So that's pretty much it in terms of what classes we have in the actual RESTlet application. So now let's take a look at the source code and see how this works. Okay, before we look at the code, there's a, uh, a few project configuration issues we've got to take care of. So first of all, we need to um, add four jar files from the RESTlet framework to our build path um, to the project in Eclipse. So here I've listed out the four classes that you'll need to go and find. These are in the lib directory under the uh, in, in the RESTlet um, framework directory. And once you've set those in the in your build path, your project's going to build just fine. So there's two RESTlet jars and then there's a couple of JSON related jars that you need to add to your build path.